Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everyone's doing well, everyone's doing all right. So uh, today's Wednesday, so uh, looking to what, get our weekend started early with this class, right? So uh, before I do anything, anybody have any questions? Anybody trying any problems, get stuck? Mr. Tucker, I have a question. Yes. I missed Monday. Um, would you be posting these um, links by the end of the day today? Because I missed Monday and I don't have any of the notes from that day. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Somebody's trying to get me to do something I don't normally do. No, I'm just messing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what I'll do for you is, because um, I think I saw your email, but I'm really playing catch up, you know, because of this weekend and everything. So uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, respond. So did you send me an email about that? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah. Um, I will, what I do, I have a little bit of a break after this class. And so I'll try to post both of them um, yesterday's and today's uh, right after class. I'll try to do that for you. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate yeah. it. Not a problem. No problem. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Also, I will look to see if. Um, if I have the ability to run another test. I know last Friday I did a testing uh, hour, did a couple of testing hours at 10 o'clock. So I will see if I'm free again this Friday to do the same. So uh, look for that email. And um, yep, so let's go ahead and, and remember outside of that, you can always check with Mr. Davis at uh, JL Davis at tcc.edu for his, um, you know, that's his email address. This is factoring, we're not factoring. Okay, here we go. So you guys are where we left off last class. Uh, we have to do two, uh, 12.3 and then 12.5. So 12.3 multiplying poly polynomials. 12.5 is uh, looking at negative exponents in scientific notation. So just give you a heads up as to where we're gonna try to go today. All right, so 12.3 multiplying polynomials. Mm. So right here would be the original problem. Let's say we're multiplying two monomials, 3x to the fourth times 4x squared. You would couple together what you can multiply and what you can simplify. So that's what we did right here. So you can multiply the three times the four and then X to the four times X squared. So three times the four, three times four is 12. And then don't forget our exponent rules. Whenever we multiply in terms with like bases, in other words, those X's, you will add your exponents. So that four plus two will give you six. So that's how we got 12 X to the six. All right, any problems with that? Next one, the same thing. We, but uh, we have negative four C to the fifth D times two C squared D cubed E. So right here, you put together what you can uh, simplify. So we have negative four times two, c to the fifth times c squared, d times d cubed, and then e is just sitting on the outside. There's nothing we could combine that with. Negative four times two is negative eight. Add your exponents for c, that would be c to the seventh. Add your exponents for d. Don't forget when you don't see anything, they assume you know there's a one there. 
So one plus three gave us four, and then we have E on the end. Any questions so far? All right, so next one, before we had two uh, monomials, you know, single terms, now we have a monomial times a binomial, you know, it's a monomial here, single term, remember your plus and minuses uh, separate your terms, so this would be a binomial, we have two terms because of that minus sign. So uh, we're going to distribute the 2x into the parentheses, so that would be 2x times 4x minus 2x times 3. 2x times 4x, 2 times 4 is 8, x times x is 8 squared, I mean x squared, you know, you add your exponents, 1 plus 1 is 2. So it's 8x squared, and then 2 times 3 is 6, so it's minus 6x. All right, next one, negative 3a squared, and we're going to multiply that times negative 4a squared plus 3a minus 1. So we're going to distribute the whole negative 3a squared to each term. So make sure you carry that negative with it, with that 3a squared. So negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. a squared and a squared add your exponents is a to the fourth. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. a squared times a would be a cubed. And then negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. And then a squared. Any questions? <laughs> All right. So now we have a binomial times a binomial. Oh, somebody had something in the chat. Why is that going on? Oh, okay, yes. All right, somebody asked something in the chat. Sorry about that. All right, so we have x minus 7 times x plus 2. So we'll still be doing distribution. Um, we're going to distribute the x into the parentheses right beside, then we're going to distribute the negative 7. So some people call it full, first, outer, inner, last. Um, or like I say, you can just recognize that this x needs to be distributed to each term in the next parentheses, and then this negative 7 needs to be distributed into each term in the next parentheses. All right. So what we do is x times x, which will give us x squared. And we're looking at x times 2, which is 2x. Then we have negative 7 times x, which is negative 7x. And then negative 7 times 2, which is negative 14. All right, questions on the distribution.
All right. Now you combine your like terms in the middle. So negative uh, 2x minus 7x is negative 5x. And that will be your most simplified expression. Any problems? All right. Next one, we have y minus 2 binomial times a trinomial, 3y squared plus y minus 5. So same thought process. We're going to take the y and distribute it to each term in the next parentheses and take negative two and distribute it into each term and the next parentheses. All right, so we're looking at y times three y squared, which is three y cubed. You know, just adding the exponents of your y. What, <clears throat> excuse me, y times y is y squared, and then y times negative 5 is negative 5y. Five All so that's how we got these first three terms. Then we're looking at negative 2 times 3y squared, which is negative 6y squared. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. And that's how we got these three terms. So before we go any further, make sure we're okay. All right, so now we combine like terms. If possible, that's always if possible. So y squared and negative 6y squared is negative 5y squared. Negative 5y, negative 2y is negative 7y. And the other terms just stay as they are. And that's how we get this last expression. Any questions, any questions? All right. More binomial multiplication. Here we have uh, 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Those are called conjugates when the only difference between the two expressions is a plus and minus sign in between. So we have positive 2x plus 3, positive 2x minus 3. Once again, the only difference is the plus and minus or having opposite signs in the middle. When you multiply those, your middle terms will end up canceling out. So uh, something to consider when, uh, or to remember when we talk, start talking about factoring. But uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. 3 times 2x is positive 6x. And then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And so, like I mentioned, whenever you have this type of scenario, what's going to happen is that the middle terms, 6x and negative 6x, you know, will cancel out and leave you with just 4x squared minus 9.
here, <clears throat> excuse me, similar situation, we have one half, half x plus six, one half x minus six. So once again, plus or minus in between, it's the only difference, so something should cancel out for us. If we do our distribution, one half times one half, that's what I was doing right here, just to reemphasize the multiplication process, all you do is multiply across. One times one is one, two times two is four. So that's the result in that is going to be one fourth. And then one half times six is right here. Follow the same process. One half times six or one half times six over one, same thing, then multiply across. So that'd be six over two and then six over two is three. So that's how I got negative three X in the middle. One half times negative six. And six times one half gives me positive three. And then six times negative six will give you negative 36. All right, questions on how we got this expression. Make sure we're okay. All right, so we see it in the middle, negative 3x and positive 3x cancels. So that'll leave us with 1 fourth x squared minus 36. Any questions, any questions? And you have one more type of scenario in this section. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So next uh, way they could present a problem that deals with the multiplication of binomials is this way. 3w minus 4 squared. So whenever you have this square or power on your quantity, what you cannot do is square each term. All right, so you can't do that like that. You can't, uh, because of that minus sign, you can't square each term like that. So what you actually have to do is look at it this way. You know, what this says is that you have 3w minus 4 times 3w minus 4. So you have to do your binomial distribution. If you go back to, you take your 2 and distribute, you will end up missing a term. So... Like I said, what you have to do is represent 3w minus 4 times 3w minus 4. Then do your binomial distribution, distributing 3w. 3w times 3w is 9w squared. 3w times negative 4 is negative 12w. Negative 4 times 3w is negative 12w. And then negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. Combine your like terms in the middle. Negative 12, negative 12 is negative 24. <laughs> Any questions? All right, let's do it one more time. So here, 5x squared plus 2 squared. So once again, we'll set it up as that quantity being multiplied times itself twice. 5x squared plus 2 times 5x squared plus 2. Do your binomial distribution. 5x squared times 5x squared, that'll be 25x to the fourth. 
5x squared times 2, 10x squared. 2 times 5x squared, 10x squared. And 2 times 2 is 4. Add the like terms in the middle. 10 plus 10 is 20. All right. Questions, questions, questions. Very good. All right. And um, don't forget that um, if you can't meet with me as far as testing is concerned, Mr. Davis, JL Davis at tcc.edu can uh, set you up for testing. Just throwing that out there. All right, any problems before we look at this last section out of chapter 12? All right, so 12.5 is negative exponents and scientific notation. So we have, um, and we mentioned the negative exponent rules, so we're just going back to those. So if we have a to the negative n, power to make it positive, I can drop it down to my denominator. So that's, that'll give me one over a to the n. Now, if I have my negative exponent in the denominator, I can make it positive by bringing it up to the numerator, which would just be a to the n. Still copy the title. And then a final um, representation of that relationship a over b raised to the negative n power. If you just apply the negative, if you just apply the negative exponent to that fraction, it will flip the fraction. So a over b will turn to b over a. And now my exponent is positive. So you can use negative exponents in any one of those three ways in order to have a positive exponent. Because most of the time, when it comes to writing your final answer or writing your answer in the most simplified form, you want a positive exponent, not a negative one. So directions tell us to simplify right using positive exponents only. So the first one, three to the negative second power. To make it positive, we drop it down to the denominator. Don't forget, you do have to have something represented in the numerator to signify that that's in the denominator three x squared, I mean three squared. And then like I said, uh, in the numerator, we're gonna put that one up there because there was nothing else. And so 3 squared then can be simplified to 1 over 9. All right. So now if I have 2 x to the third, x to the negative third power. Now, what's being applied by that negative is, or the negative exponent is just the x. So the negative 3 is not affecting the 2. So I'll take the negative 3 with x to the negative third, bring it down bottom to make it positive. Now, I don't have to use uh, 1 like I did in the first one because I still have 2. That's a part of the expression. So the 2 will stay in the numerator. x to the third will drop down to the denominator. Now, if that was going to affect both the 2 and the x, then, you know, you have to use parentheses. I believe we talked about that before. And then that will drop the whole thing down bottom. 
Okay, so once again, that's the difference between having parentheses or not having parentheses when it comes to our exponents. All right, any questions on anything? All right. Next one, we have two to the negative first power plus four to the negative first power. So what I would do is drop them both down to your denominator, which gives us this one over two plus one over four. Now, if you want to add your exponents, not add your exponents, now if you want to add your fractions, don't forget you need common denominators. So LCD will be four. Turn one half into a fraction that has a denominator four by multiplying top and bottom by two. That'll give me two over four plus one over four, which would result in three over four. Any questions? All right. Here we have one over three to the negative four, uh, negative fourth power. So that three to the negative fourth is in our denominator. So to turn it positive, we have to bring it up to the numerator. So that's how we have three to the fourth power. Now my exponent is positive. Three to the fourth power is three times itself so four times, which would be 81. Any questions? All right, so the next one, p to the negative fourth over q to the negative fifth. So we recognize that both of them have negative exponents. So the q to the fifth, I will bring up top. And then p to the fourth, I'll take down bottom to turn them positive. And that's all you would do with that. Any questions? All right, so here we have x over x to the negative second power. So don't forget whenever you're dividing, you're gonna subtract your exponents. And also when you don't see anything as an exponent, you assume you know there's a one there. So that'll give us one minus negative two. So the division says subtract, and then we have a negative two in our denominator. So be careful with those negatives. Be careful with the negatives. So that will be x to the third power. 
You know, negative to a negative turns positive. So the x to the third power. All right, here we have a to the negative fifth divided by a to the seventh. Once again, we're dividing our exponents, so that means we need to subtract. So that's negative five minus seven for our exponents. Negative five minus seven to give us negative 12. Then to represent that as a positive exponent, we drop it down to our denominator, so it'd be one over a to the positive 12 power. Any questions? All right, next one. This is our original problem right here. Y to the negative third, Z to the six, raised to the negative six power. So the first thing we wanna do is to apply that negative six power to each piece or each variable. And that's what happens over here. I have Y to the negative third, raised to the negative six power, Z to the six, raised to the negative six power. All right, and then don't forget, whenever you have a power to a power, you're gonna multiply your exponents. So negative three times negative six is positive 18. Six times negative six is negative 36. That's how we got these exponents right here. And then to write all of our exponents as positive exponents, the y to the 18th is, po is positive, so that's fine. But here we have negative 36, so I need to drop it down into our denominator. So that's why we'll have y to the 18th over z to the 36 power. Any questions? <laughs> All right, I think this is the last one, yep. Yeah. So let me erase some of this stuff. All right, so this is the original problem right here. We have negative two x to the third y over x y to the negative first power. And we're raising all that to the third power. All right. So the first part of this is to you know, bring together what you can uh, simplify. So in other words, we have x to the third and x. We have y and y to the negative first. So that's what's going on right here and right here. Don't forget when it comes to division, that means we're gonna subtract our exponents. So for x, that's three minus one. For y, that's one minus negative one. So that division sign says subtract your exponents. 
3 minus 1 for x, 1 minus negative 1 for y. Questions on that part? Okay, so here, that means I have x squared because 3 minus 1 is 2. Then 1 minus negative 1, negative 2, negative 2 is positive, so it's 1 plus 1, which would be 2 for y. Now I can take that 3 that's on the outside and apply it to each piece of this term. So that's what we have here, negative 2 cubed, x squared cubed, y squared cubed. And then we can finish it off, negative 2 cubed, that's negative 2 times itself 3 times, which is negative 8. And multiply your exponents here. 2 times 3 will give you x to the 6, y to the 6 for your exponents. Any questions? All right. So one more thing in this uh, section is scientific notation. So scientific notation is used to express very extreme values, where, whether it's very, very large or very, very small. It's written in the form of A times 10 to the R power, where A is going to be in between 1 and 10. And R, your exponent, is going to be an integer. All right, so examples of that in the green, 1.23 times 10 to the fifth power. That 1.23 is in between 1 and 10. And the 5, when your, ex your exponent as a 5 is an integer. Remember, integers are something, are the regular numbers. They're not decimals, they're not fractions. Um, you know, they're rational. So. But they can't be positive or negative. So that's what we see in the um, 7.8 times 10 to the negative 31st power. 7.8 is in between one and 10, and then negative 31 is an exponent. All right. So write each number in scientific notation. So we have this number right here, 367 million. So first thing we're gonna do is find our decimal. And your decimal, if you don't see it, is always to the right of the rightmost digit. Then you want to go and take your decimal, how many, however many spaces it takes to create a number that's in between one and 10. So putting our decimal, you know, if we were to put a decimal right here, that'd be 36.7. Of course, that's greater than 10. If we were to put it over here, that's 0.367. That's less than uh, one. So the move to make is to put our decimal in between the three and the six. So you take your decimal, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the left. And so that's 3.67, and that's why we have 10 to the eighth. Any questions on that? Next one, we have point zero 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 uh, zero five, and so it's the same thought process. This time the decimal is is evident though. You see the decimal, and you want to take it and put it in a place where we create a number that's in between one and ten. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Putting the decimal behind the five creates the number five, which is in between one and ten. So we moved six to the right. Notice we went eight to the left, and they gave me a, you know, that represented a large number. And so that's why we had to have a positive eight, because this is a representation of the number we originally had. So it needs to represent a, um, a positive effect, you know, that 10 to the positive eight has to turn this 3.6 to that million. So here, this negative six as an exponent has to turn five back into this small number. So you can kind of look at it that way. Or some people just want to say, if I move the decimal to the left, it's going to be positive. If I move the decimal to the right, it's going to be negative. Whichever way um, you want to do that, whichever way it helps you to remember, remember best, you know, um, most definitely adopt that thought process. Um, but questions on that, all we're doing is moving decimal to the right or left and uh, accordingly. All right, so here we do the same thing. We have 2,500. Yep, I'm just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. Eight zeros back there. So find the decimal and then move our decimal however many decimal places to the left in order to create a number that's in between one and ten. So notice I put the decimal right here. So that gives me 2.05. And that means I move my decimal 10 places to the left. All right, any questions? All right. And then here, point zero 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 eight five. Take your decimal, move it four places to the right to create a number in between one and ten, which is eight point five. And that would be eight point five times ten to the negative fourth. Any questions? All right, so now we're going to do the reversal of that process. So we're going to write in standard notation. In other words, writing without the exponents. So we have one point. 0 0.02 times 10 to the fifth power. Remember I mentioned that if you have a positive exponent, then a positive effect has to take place into that number. So in other words, it needs to get larger. So I need to move my decimal five places to the right. So that'd be 102,000.
right. Same type of deal would be, um, but this time we have a negative exponent. So we're going in the opposite direction. But, uh, you know, it should have a negative effect. So that's why we have to take our decimal to the left. Make that 7.358 smaller. So that'll be 0 0.007358. And, you know, oftentimes people ask me about the zero in front of the decimal. It's not necessary. Uh, I normally use it, but uh, whether you use it or not, math lab still should uh, mark it correct if you've done it correctly. Problem. All right, eight point four times ten to the seventh. Move your decimal to uh, seven places to the right. That's eighty four million. I think it's the last one. Yep, last one. So we have 3.007 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we move our decimal five places to the left. Giving us 0.00003007. Any questions? All right. So that is it for uh, content in 12. So make sure you guys are trying this stuff out. See if you have any questions on anything. Um, next class, I'll open the floor four questions, see if anything was generated over the weekend, see if you ran into any snares or traps in any of your problems in any section. So, uh, you know, it's not specific to chapter 12. Any section that you have a question on, feel free to bring those to class, next class, that will be the first thing that we'll do and then move from there. Um, any questions, any concerns before we close out? Everybody good, everybody straight? All right, so if you guys are good, I'm good. Um, have a great weekend, be safe. Like I said, try the stuff out and uh, let's see if we need to talk about some more stuff on Monday. Uh, yep, Monday. All right, y'all take care. Mr. Turger, are you still available after class today? Yep, 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 just hold tight.